Hello, my name is Austin from AwfulMedia.com, and today we are going to be creating a custom WordPress widget. Now, this is going to be an extension of my WordPress theme tutorial series. In that series, we went from scratch and we're working on a theme. We're almost done with it, but one thing we have to do before I will say that the, the series is complete is we have to work on a custom widget because that's kind of an important part of WordPress development is understanding how to create plugins and widgets. Now this is going to be a very, very simple widget and we're going to wrap it into a plugin so we can use it in all our themes or whatever we want to do. But the idea of the widget is going to just give you the idea of how to construct a widget and how to display widget information. Maybe later down the road we'll actually work on options for the widget. You can add in, uh, it's, it's not very difficult but it's a lot more advanced than I want this uh, little series to be. But what we're going to be doing is simply creating a widget and inside that widget we're going to loop through and grab our most popular posts. But the point of this widget isn't for people to use it because there's 125 better ones out there. But this one is just to show you how to do it. First thing, I want to point out, this isn't going to be a long series. The WordPress series is on part like 30, 31 right now, and I have a few recorded that I have to upload. And we're just, it's probably going to go into about 40 or 45 parts. The reason this is an extension of that and not really just a, a part of I didn't include it in the series, is because people can benefit from this who maybe didn't want to benefit from the whole series. So this is going to be like a 5, 6, 7, 40, 50 part series on uh, just just the widget and the plugin itself that we can extend in the future if we want to take what we've learned today and tomorrow and the next day and build on that it'll be very simple to do because it's all in its own series so let's go ahead and get started the first thing we want to do is go to our wordpress directory inside the wordpress directory we're going to go to the wordpress content folder and inside of this folder we're going to go to the plugins folder like I said, we're going to be creating a custom plugin that will wrap our widget so we can plug it into other themes down the road. And we're just going to create a new folder inside of here. And I want to call mine AM Popular Widget. It would help if you don't have like a unique name for your plugin to come up with a unique name or to prefix it with something that will make it stand out from other plugins. So in my case, AM for Awful Media. Now inside of this, we'll have our plugin file, which will be a PHP file. Any CSS we'll need if we have, you know, if we extend it in the future, it'll all be stored right inside this folder. This is the widgets.php that's included in WordPress, in the WordPress includes folder. And this is the class that creates our widget, that, that constructs our widget, the WordPress underscore widget class. And we'll be taking this class and we'll just go in here and be able to modify functions and variables from our plugin file. We don't have to go in here and modify it. We don't have to write all this out again. We'll just go through and select what we want to, to extend, what we want to modify, and change values or whatever it may be to fit our custom plugin. I was going to show you what we were going to be extending as we, ex as we wrote that, but it's up now so there you go we're going to create a new file let's just save it we're going to save it in our content plugins and go to the am popular widget save it here as am popular widget it's going to be a dot php file and in that case you can just go all files the first thing we're going to do inside of this is we're going to open up a php tag and we're going to close that php tag now inside of this we'll have all of our stuff for our widget. At the top of this though we have to write in a few comments. PHP comments are done just like this right here. This is just for WordPress to read. WordPress will read this and get the plugin information that it needs. The first string of information that WordPress requires is a plugin name. So we'll write plugin name and then we'll give it a plugin name. Mine's gonna be AM Popular Post. Now this is the name that you will see in the plugins page in your WordPress admin panel. The next thing we're going to define is a plugin URI. Now this is just uh, a string that will help identify what it is. Normally just a URL to a plugin info page or something like that. But mine for now is just going to be 
awfulmedia.com because I don't have a plugin page or anything like that. Now the next thing is going to be the description of the plugin. The description will be displayed in the admin panel as well. And you can do whatever you want to do here, but just mine's going to be pretty short. I was going to say add the awful media popular posts widget to your theme or something like that. Then we can set the the bet, the version number, 1.0. The next thing we're going to set is the author. Mine's just going to say Austin. Yours can say uh, your your website, uh, your full name, some kind of information about the author, whatever it may be. The next thing is going to be the author URI. Now this is normally just a link to the, a page about the author. So again, just uh, mine's going to be alphamedia.com. And then we can set a license. And I'm not going to have a license set for this, but uh, if it was a plugin I would release to the public, then I would find the, the appropriate license and put it right there. So now we're done with the comments. That's all you have to write in the comments. Now, like I said, this is all information that WordPress will use to fill in the fields in the WordPress admin panel. So if we go in here now and we were to go to the appearance and, uh, or sorry, go to plugins, you'll see right here we have AM popular post. That's the title we give it. We have the description, add the Alpha Media popular post widget to your theme, the version 1.0 by Austin. Now you'll see that is a link to alphamedia.com because of the URI and visit the plugin site. That is a link to alphamedia.com because of the plugin URI. And then we have the option to activate it, edit it, or deleted it. That's deleted it. That is the default by WordPress. If we click activate, you see plugin activated, but nothing happened because all it is is a blank file. The next thing we're going to do is set up the custom class we're going to create. I want to pause the video for a moment and take a very brief second to explain what a class is in object oriented programming. In our case, PHP. This is not a PHP tutorial though, so if you want to actually go in depth a bit, make sure to check out the description below and there'll be a link to some articles that you can uh, read up on classes and stuff and actually get an, an understanding of what's going on. But just so you're not completely clueless if you don't know what it is, I want to take a brief second to explain it. A class is a way that you can take and package together a bunch of code, a bunch of functions, variables, things that uh, are related to one object in our sense, say it's a, a user. So you take, you're going to relate this to the user object. So inside of this class, you would have the username, the user password, the user email. Those would be variables, right? And you have these variables set to whatever. And you'd also, you could also store the functions that relate to the user. So say you have the function that creates the username, you have the function that creates the user password, you have the function that, that creates the user email. Obviously just a brief example, but all of that could be stored inside a class. You could take and call that class, recreate it, create different instances of that class anywhere down the page. And the instance is just like a snapshot of it. So take that and recreate it. You could also extend it, which you're going to be doing, extend it and modify different things. Uh, like we'll be doing for the WordPress widget. And then when you have to change something, you don't have to go through and change all the different instances of that class. You just change that one class and it will modify everything for you. So that's really the big benefit of object oriented versus just procedural. You have it all in a single class and you just have instances of that class that are used everywhere else. So keep that in mind and make sure to check out the articles below if you have any other questions and we'll get back to the video. I hope I don't have to pause it anymore, but I'm going to be pausing it if I don't explain anything in depth enough. So let's hope I don't have to, but I may have to. Here we go. So I set up a class. So we're going to say class and add a space there and then give it the name of your class. Typically the name of your plugin. So mine's going to be AM with the underscore popular posts. And if you don't have a unique name, it would be ideal to create a unique name or add a prefix here. My prefix is being AM so that you don't have any conflictions with other classes uh, that plugins may add or whatever. So make sure you have some kind of identification there. Then we're going to come off that and say extends. So it's going to be, ex this class will be an extension of another class. So we're going to say extends 
and then the WordPress widget. So we're going to be extending the WordPress widget class, like I've said, 120 times. Then we're going to enter that down, and inside of this class, we can then set up the functions or whatever it may be that we're going to be modifying 